what, what's reasonable? What's a reasonable way of preparing you know, for operating in a world where cybersecurity is a foreseeable issue? Number one is to understand what's important to you as, a, as an organisation and as an individual. Because I don't think you can, you can make some choices unless you understand that first. So that's the first thing you do. Secondly, you've, you've got to understand that you can't protect against everything, so you've got to be pragmatic about how you go about this. And so the value of the, the, your asset, the information or whatever you wanna, you're trying to defend needs to be understood. So then you can then go, well, in a risk reward model, I'm trying to balance out how much I'm going to commit to trying to manage this. And I'm going to accept that there's, I can't manage everything and there's, on occasion, I'm going to pay a price for that. But I understand roughly what that price is, at least in sort of some level of um, terms of, of the consequence to me as an individual and, or the organisation as a whole. And in other parts of your business, there's an answer to costing that other piece, and that's insurance. So you, you don't have flammable material around, but occasionally there's a fire, and in that case, you have insurance to cover the gap. This is, a real, this is an emerging marketplace today, but one that is difficult to navigate. It's immature yeah. in, in itself. The insurance companies generally are trying to, to upskill themselves, in a sense, and certainly gain the knowledge that they need to, to better assess the risks in the domain. The people that are buying insurance, and even the brokers that are selling the insurance, don't really know what they're buying yeah, or selling. And you also get a point where people are looking to buy insurance for the wrong reasons. I want to buy cyber insurance so I don't have to do cybers. Mm. And that's the wrong approach because if you read the policies, if you're not doing good security practice, the insurance doesn't pay out. In the same way as every other insurance, if you're not doing the things that you need to do to have basic hygiene of your business, then it's not going to pay. Yeah, if you don't lock your houses, doors and windows, good luck trying to exactly. find a burglary. If yeah. you're unlicensed driving a car, mm. try claiming that. So the insurance companies want to sell it mm. and businesses want to buy it, but we don't have any history of understanding how to cost this. And so we've already had the conversation about how do we know what's most important to us. We don't know this right now. And how can an insurance company therefore take some random valuation at a price that makes sense for us to pay? I think. In many cases today, cyber insurance isn't a great choice. Business resumption insurance is a good idea, the same thing that would cover if a car crashed into your shop or there was a fire or some other event, assuming it doesn't exclude it. But it's, it's an area that we can't then externalise the, the final component of the cost of an incident. Mm -hmm. And while we live in a world where we can't externalise that, we need to internalise it, we need to consciously internalise it. We need to value that and do, make our own choices that make sense for it. Uh, and that comes down to the question of understanding the value of, of what you're doing and, and the impact on your, you, you as an individual or an organisation and about not being able to do that. And uh, financial uh, impact and consequences where insurance assists. Mm. It, uh, it reduces your financial consequence, but it's all the other things that you can't insure against that make it more challenging for you. So, I mean, loss of life, there, as you pointed out, there will be situations, and there are now surgical robots, so classic, where the, we're sitting there, or we're lying there on the operating theatre, and there is a technology with software. Three years ago, I had my eyes lasered. And that was, go lie in a robot, and it does all the work. And while I was sitting there in the robot, me being me, I was thinking, I hope there's not a power failure during this <laughs> procedure because I don't know whether th the building is appropriately covered. I don't know whether the, no doubtly, Windows XP box that's in the guts of this robot is connected to anything, and it's lasering my eyes. Yeah. Now, positive sense, it's great, perfect, absolutely swimmingly. But this is a conversation most people can't even have. It doesn't even occur to them to have, and maybe it causes me more stress than others because I think we're down this path. Well, you were informed on that, and, and you made a decision on risk acceptance. And yeah. I did. You're satisfied and, with your choice. But I might be one of the few people who actually made an informed decision mm. because they didn't understand the consequence of the technology that was driving their choice. Now, I think it was great, and I'm very pleased I had it done. But there could have been some fairly spectacularly negative consequences if if the cybers had come to pass. And, and one of the, the challenges there is that 
the, it's almost like utility IT or you, uh, utility technology. We use it, but we don't understand it. And so in an organisation, what we want to do is understand that the, the, the technology is a tool to allow us to do something. But it really takes information, does something with it, and there's an outcome. We need to understand the inputs, the information, how important it is. Then we need to understand some of the risks around the process and the technology that will affect the outcome. Because in, from an organisational perspective, all we really care about is the outcome. We need to do something. We need to achieve an outcome. We need all of these other pieces of the puzzle to be in place to make sure that we get to that point. Well, we want a positive outcome, not a negative one. So. Now, James, I'm sure your next question would immediately then be, how could any consumer make a uh, an informed choice with the technology, as David said, being so complex we don't it's understand? It's like you read my notes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the answer is they can't, which is why in most other industries, there's some level of regulation or certification. It, doesn't have, it can be industry certification, but something that says it's too complex for you to understand, not in a condescending way, but an actual it's too complex to understand, therefore we need to do some assurance on your behalf that says this is safe. I think we'll get there. In fact, I'm certain we'll get there, but we're not there today. And a lot of businesses have said, if I try and do things in a secure way, that will cost me. It will cost time to market it will take longer. It means the product will be more expensive. The implicit assumption in there is that people won't pay for safety. And I think it's fundamentally wrong. Mm. People will pay for safety. They pay for safety in their car every single day. They will choose a car that costs more because it has anti-lock brakes, because it has airbags, because it has seat tensioners. They will consciously choose that because they understand that safety is good for them but they understand that those things are part of the safety paradigm, the safety yeah. model for cars. The problem we have in the cyber world is people don't understand. Yeah, there's that, that lack of understanding of the consequences. And the, the technology in itself is confusing enough for the majority of people that use it that they don't want to learn about that. So they're ill-informed about the, the landscape in which they live. Uh, whereas in cars, some people just rely on the ANCAP safety rating. It's five stars, therefore I know it's safe. But some people will, will, will ask the question, have, how many airbags has this got? You know, does it have uh, traction control systems? Does it have uh, active driver aids? 